Good evening all, I hope you've had a good week. Well, first up today, a big well done to the Upper Sixth and to the marching band who in their bubbles took part in our Remembrance Day parade and act of remembrance on Wednesday morning. Mr. Follett was in the air and I'm grateful to him and Mrs. Garnier who was on the ground for these pictures. I always find the reading of the names very moving and I'm pleased that we we're able to honor the Pangornians among all those who gave their lives in war in an appropriate way. But the occasion also brought home to me how much we're missing by not being able to parade as a school due to the coronavirus. It's the sense of community and belonging, of pride in making everything come together after all the rehearsals and the attention to shoes and uniform, of doing something really well together, which we're missing. And I'm hugely grateful to the Upper Sixth and the Marching Band, therefore, for reminding me what it's all about this week. As an aside, I must commend all your groups, in fact, for the way in which you've approached your weekly parade practices, knowing that there won't be parades for a while, which has been very positive, and I can't wait for the day when we can once again parade as a school. Well, second, last week, we heard that many of you had been successful in your Trinity Guildhall drama exams, and the following certificates were issued via house musters. Like uh, music exams, there are eight grades, and the higher levels, grade six and above, require both commitment and flair to get either merit or distinction gradings. They're great for building confidence too, so well done to all of you. And I'd encourage anyone who's interested in either drama or music to speak to the relevant department about using the structure of grades to develop your skills. Well, finally today, I want to share something which I hope will be helpful to all of us, students and staff, as we all try to deal with the many challenges we face, many of which are really beyond our control, but about which we still worry. One of the books which I found most helpful to me is this one, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And as you can see, uh, lots of people have brought copies uh, and the seven habits have been proven to work. It's quite a thick book. And whilst it's uh, well worth reading from cover to cover, lots of people have tried to summarise its message into more easily digestible form via their YouTube channels. And I want to play you the first five minutes of the best summary I've come across. Uh, and the link to the full video is in the notes below. What's going on, guys? Today's video is going to be on the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey. Now, this book has touched millions of people's lives. It's one of, if not the most well-known success books out there. There are literally thousands of success books out there, so why should this one be any different? Well, Stephen researched the last 200 years of success literature and found something quite interesting. In the last 50 years, most of the books have been focused on the personality ethic. Things like public image, how you dress, how you perform in social interactions, positive mental attitude, skills and techniques to get people to behave in certain ways. These books focus on how to appear rather than how to actually be. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People takes an inside-out approach. It focuses on the character ethic rather than the personality ethic. In the words of Stephen Covey, almost all the literature in the first 150 years or so focused on what could be called the character ethic as the foundation for success. Things like integrity, humility, temperance, courage, and justice, patience, industry, simplicity, modesty, and the golden rule. The character ethic taught that there are basic principles of effective living, and that people can only experience true success and enduring happiness as they learn and integrate these principles into their basic character. You know, greatness starts from the inside out. Of course, there is a place for personality ethic, but character forms the foundation. Personality ethics need to be rooted in character. The personality ethic can be seen as fake, or as a fake it till you make it image if it's not rooted in character. Sometimes people apply these personality techniques in order to use and manipulate people to meet their own goals and agendas. In the long run, people will eventually see through this duplicity but you can't fake character ethic. If you're still a little fuzzy on this concept, picture an iceberg, right? The personality ethic is above the water. The character ethic is below the water. It forms a foundation. It's where the greatest impact over the long term is. It's where you sow the seeds of greatness. The problem is that people don't focus on the foundation. They focus on the appearance. They're looking for shortcuts and quick fixes, but there are no shortcuts. 
There is no quick fix program. But if you endure and apply the following habits, you will absolutely achieve your goals and it will help you develop better relationships. A bit of a long intro there, but necessary to understand the principles this book is based on. So let's jump into the seven habits. Habit one is be proactive. Let's look at something called the circle of concern and the circle of influence. The circle of concern consists of all the things that are out of your control, like the weather, politics, what people think of you, the economy, other people's mistakes, and other people's opinions. The circle of influence consists of all the things you can control, your attitude, what you read, what skills you learn, your enthusiasm, how you spend your free time and who you spend it with, your habits and hobbies, and so on. With that said, there are two ways to live life. You can either be reactive or proactive. Reactive people complain about the things that are out of their control. Their environment and outside forces affect their performance and their mood. Additionally, they don't take action or ownership of the things that they can control. And then you have the other type of person. They are proactive. This type of person realizes that their decisions determine their life, not their conditions. Proactive people don't complain about things they can't control. Additionally, they take action to improve the things that they can control. Proactive people understand that sometimes we may not have complete control over a certain situation, but we can control how we respond to a situation. So let's look at an example of how a proactive and a reactive person responds to the same situation. Two people take a test and then they both fail. One blames the teacher and gives up, the other takes responsibility and ownership, studies harder and tries to improve themselves. The reactive person complains about how bad the teacher is and the proactive person asks, what can I do? They look at themselves first instead of blaming and complaining. Don't focus on what you can't control, focus on what you can control. Take responsibility and keep in mind as you become more proactive within your circle of influence, it grows bigger. You bring more power into your life. Even if you only implement one habit out of these seven habits I'm going to go over, make it this one. This one alone can have a huge impact on your life. In life, you either act or you're acted upon. I think the emphasis on character rather than personality is important. And this, of course, is entirely consistent with Pangborn's emphasis on our flag values. But I hope the first habit of be proactive is also helpful as a way of focusing our attention on the things which we can control and not worrying about the things which we cannot. And the paradox seems to be that as we do that, our circle of influence increases. I think Jesus's advice to his followers is quite similar in his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter six. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For non-believers run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Focus on the things which are important to God, he says, and God will ensure that your needs are provided for. So with these things in mind, please join me in this short prayer. Almighty God, thank you for the many reminders in the Bible that you are in control and for your daily provision for our needs. Help us to be both people of faith, but also people of good habits. And we pray today that you would help us to focus more on the things which we can control than the things which we cannot. Thank you that you value each of us more than we know. And we pray in turn that you would help us to be a community in which we show that we value each other. We ask this in the name of your precious son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. I hope you will have a good weekend.